In this video tutorial, we'll be going over the steps to configure a PC call station server client to connect to the Cisco SPA3102 voice gateway. The first thing we're going to do is start up our PC call station configuration client. From here, uh, basically we're just going to check off login. Uh, you don't want to check off work offline or enter in any passwords. The next step is to configure our network controllers. This is basically entering in any, in, any NCO information uh, as far as IP, uh, username and password. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to allow the server to log in to each NCO that I enter and pull any information out that has been programmed uh, into the individual units. Basically check off get configuration and we'll see that process. There we go, we trees seven messages and 92 tones from NCO1. Go ahead and click accept. And the next step, what we're gonna do is configure our predefined calls. This is a, a predetermined set of commands that can be used to uh, initiate calls. Our first one is gonna be uh, the TI all call we're gonna make. We're gonna check off use for PC TI and give it, a, give it a numerical alias. The numerical alias is a call number that somebody on the phone system could use to call up this specific uh, predefined call. You wanna check off live speech and give it a destination as far as where that audio is coming from. In this example, the audio from the computer to the NCO is coming in on NCO1 audio input four. Make any zone selections that you'd like this call to go to. Since this is an all call, I'm going to pick the all call group for the NCO1. Click OK, and that will bring you back to our main menu. The next step in this is going to be to configure our PC telephone interface client. This is basically uh, telling the system what extension they're going to dial to log in to the phone system to make a page. In this example, it's not gonna matter what extension I put in because the communication is going direct internally between our PC call station server and the, and the SPA3102. The configure zone group aliases is a, a list of aliases for uh, individual zones. Since this is an all call, they won't be making any zone selections. But if there was a call where they had to make zone selections, uh, basically the numbers I would enter here would be uh, used uh, to make that call. You'll also want to verify that the country tone selection is appropriate for your country. Next step is going to be configure PC telephone interface client users. These are individuals who are calling into the system to make overhead pages through the phone system. Each person could have a individual personal number and a pin code, which is basically a password. For this example, I'm using 1234 and password 1234. You can also limit the predefined calls that a specific user has access to. Next step is going to be to configure our SIP users. This is the SIP information that you're going to have to enter into the SPA3102. Whatever you put in here has to match identical, identically to what you enter into the SPA3102. For this, we're going to use PRS, all capital. It does uh, take capitalization into, uh, into consideration here. And our password is admin. Direct access, if this box is checked, uh, essentially, the phone system is going to assume that a specific user is calling in every time. Therefore, it's not going to ask for login credentials before making a page. Right here, we're going to assume that 1234 is calling in. The next and final step is basically entering our license registration key. License registrations can be gained at license.boshsecurity.com. Uh, you'll want to enter in your dongle serial number and it will give you a long registration code seen on the screen right now 
what we'll do is we'll enter in that registration code and hit OK. And at that point, our system is going to tell us what our dongle is licensed for. Now that we've written our configuration, the next step is to make it active. Go to File, Make Active, click OK, and basically it's going to write all this information to the internal web server. Right here we can see it's licensed and connected, and at this point uh, we're ready to start configuring up our SPA3102. We'll go ahead and File, Exit, and then we'll save our configuration file in case we need to make any changes in the future. Go ahead and call it PCCS, Connect V1 and go ahead and click save and at that point it'll exit out and we can move on to our next step which is configuring our Cisco SPA3102 voice gateway. The first step in this is going to be uh, setting up our computer IP to be on the same network as the SPA3102. The default IP address for the SPA3102 is 192.168.0.1 as seen here. From this point, uh, what you want to do is uh, go down to your uh, network address uh, and verify that your LAN connection or however you're connected is on the same network. Right here I'm at 192.168.0.111 which is on the same network. Uh, my NCO happens to be on a different network and we'll go through changing that as well. Go ahead and hit admin login and then hit advanced and that will bring you into the advanced menu and we can change our WAN setup which is our IP address for the, uh, the wide area network. We want to check off static IP and we want to basically give this an IP that's in the same range as our network controller 192.168.1.130 that will be in the same range as my NCO you'll see. Uh, subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and then the gateway for my system. Another thing you'll want to check off is the remote management enable WAN web server. Uh, you'll want to make sure that is checked off as yes or else you're not going to be able to go in through the WAN port and configure the device. Our LAN address has to be on a different network. That'll be on the 0 dot network, uh, 192.168.0.130, and we'll no longer be connecting with that port. At this point, I can switch my network ports on the SPA3102 to the internet port rather than the ethernet port. I can go ahead and change my IP address of my computer to the correct uh, IP structure for my site in my office, in my LAN here, I am on a 1.network, so we'll go ahead and set up back on the 1.network. And then I'm going to go and verify communication to my NCO, my 192.168.1.244. And there we go. So I have communication with my computer and my NCO are talking to each other, and now we'll just check communication between my computer and the SPA3102. And there we go. At this point, we can begin programming. What you want to do is check off admin, um, admin user and advanced. And then we're going to go under the voice tab. Once we've checked off the voice tab, we're going to click on line one. This will be our first configuration step. And we're going to put in a proxy. This is the IP address of the server computer where the dongle is located. In this case, it's 192.168.1.112. That is also where the audio is being generated that is routed from the NCO to, uh, from the computer to the NCO. Our subscriber information is basically what I entered into the SIP information on the configuration client. Remember, that was PRS capital and lowercase admin. That basically concludes everything as far as configuration for line one. Our next step is going to be to configure the PSTN line. Right here we're going to enter in the same proxy information which is the server computer's IP address 192.168.1.112 and the subscriber information which again will match what we entered into the SIP information of the PC call station configuration client. It's capital PRS lowercase admin and then we're going to generate a dial plan. This is basically uh, telling the system what extension 
to uh, route calls to. So my dial plan zero means that anytime somebody dials extension 1111, it is to be placed at the IP address of 192.168.1.112. Since we're using an SPA 3102, anytime a call comes in, it's automatically going to be answered and the call is going to be routed to that server computer, to that 112 address. Another thing we're going to check off here is our answer delay. We're going to change that to 1 and then we're going to hit submit. Once this is finished, we will see a registration page where we can see our status for line 1 and PSTN. We can see here that line 1 is registered and also our PSTN line is registered. At this point, I could plug a phone directly into the SPA 3102 and attempt a page by pressing 1111 or route a call into the phone line and Presidio should pick up on the first ring. If you should run into any problems configuring your system, give our technical services group a call and we'll be able to walk you through any problems you should be having. Thank you.